Today on the bench we have a little Chinese play toy. <laughs> um, I've looked at the IC testers and identifiers for years. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. Most of the big electronics equipment manufacturers have made them over the years. Basically you take an IC, plug it in a socket, push go, and it tells you what it is and if it's any good. Basically, if it tells you what it is, obviously it's working because the pin, all of the pins, you know, input, output pins or whatever, are doing what they're supposed to do. Um, but those things are really expensive, and even in the used market, a lot of the, a lot of times those things uh, maintain a lot of their uh, value. So even in the used market, they're still expensive. But leave it to the Chinese, um, you know, to come up with a cheap modern copy. Of some sort. Now, I'm not going to say this is a copy because it's. Uh, I can't say any of the uh, ones that I've seen um, manufactured by any of the big big electronics equipment manufacturers, test equipment manufacturers, look anything like this. So, you know, I'd have to say that it's probably an all original design, but uh, it works well. I've actually was surprised it was like 31, some oddball number, like $31.56 with free shipping off of eBay. Um, as you can see, it's blown apart because. Uh, Kind of like uh, Dave Jones' EEV blog. Don't plug it in. Tab out a pot. Uh, yeah, there's my uh, <clears throat> attempt at uh, <laughs> saying it like he does. But uh, in any case, so you know, as you can see, there's not a lot to it. You know, one side of the board, the back side here. There's absolutely no components. It is double sided. All circuit traces on this. You can see all the throughs, and then this ribbon cable here just goes to the keypad on here. Uh, now this thing comes with absolutely no instructions. Not uncommon for cheap Chinese test equipment or basically anything cheap Chinese. <laughs> no instructions or instructions that are basically useless. Let me move the camera down here a little bit. Um, so inside, um, now this operates off two AA batteries, does not come with them. Yeah, that's pretty much common. You always have to supply your own batteries. Um, Here's your zip socket, which is where you install your IC under test. So what those, if you're not familiar with this type of socket, um, there are little two metal jaws in there, and when you close it, you can see they clamp down, okay? And that's meant for just that purpose, something that's going to be installed and removed a million times. So you don't damage pins and doesn't wear out the socket, because you just open it up and clamp it down. But it does say 3M on it, and honestly, looking at it, I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually 3M. I mean, in person, the build quality of that, that socket actually looks pretty damn good. Um, I even removed one of the screws and checked it. It's stainless steel, so who knows? That may actually be a God's the Honest 3M socket in there. Um, and man, the Chinese, they're really, they're, they're really picking up their game. i got to give it to them. Um, like I say, instructions, forget it. And even when you do get instructions, a lot of times they're useless still because they were written by a Chinese engineer... Yeah, and then convert it into English, and yeah, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. But, you know, luckily, what's it got? Seven buttons. <laughs> so there's not a lot to it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so we have the little display, little LCD display. There's a processor, quad flat pack hiding under there. Actually, let me see. The number is 12C5A60S2. And what do we got under that? 351-L, no, yeah, LQFP, <laughs> quad flat pack, 44G, so yeah, 44 pin quad flat pack, I count the pins, I don't need them to type it on there for tell me that. Now, uh, the other major components on here is actually, what, one seven, there's, and all of these are the same, and then both of these are the same, so we have 74HC573D and LS145s, yep, so two LS145s, one there and there, and then all the rest, all the other ones here are the same. So there's not a lot to it. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, it doesn't really need to do that much. Um, it's checking TTL, CMOS, Logic ICs. Now, this does do op amps, transistors, hell, I think it said optocouplers in the listing. I mean, it actually does a surprising amount of stuff. Um, and like I say, there's not much to it. Now, it's not 100% automatic. Uh, sometimes it does have an auto mode, you know, unknown component. You just drop it in the socket, hit start, and if it can, it will identify it. Uh, but some ICs, it has trouble identifying, and it tells you that you need to set it. If it's like a an LS or a 
it different because you the 74 series ICs came in different uh, types so you need to set it for that and the same thing with the 4000 series you could get those in CD which is what I usually in my world work with or what the hell I don't even remember what the heck the other one is HFE 4000 series but uh, yeah so actually let me just get this little thing popped back together not much to it yeah the screws yeah they're pretty much crap quality screws not to be unexpected then yeah the cabinet yeah it's about as cheap plastic as you can get I mean <laughs> make a mold out of clay in your backyard and pour some plastic in it. That's about what you come up with. But yeah, actually, I mean, in all honesty, it's, you know, it's rigid, probably hold up for a while. Um, doesn't seem to, you know, trying to flex it here. Not like it's going to break in half. So yeah, I mean, it gets the job done. Um, one thing I will say is you had a battery compartment that slides off right here. Woo yeah, you're going to need a screwdriver. <laughs> no matter how hard you push down and back with that thing, I couldn't get that damn battery door off to save my butt. I had to stick a screwdriver you know, in this slot right here, give it a little twist to get the battery door to pop out. But yeah, what do you expect? It's $31.56. It's not like I paid three grand for this thing. So let me get the, uh, the board remounted in here, and it just you know, flips around. like that and four screws on the board here and then four screws in the back cover so let me get this screwed back together get the batteries over there popped into the battery compartment we'll uh, turn it on drop some ICs in it and show that it actually ident properly identifies them and actually it can give you some choices now I understand that's probably part of the uh, um, going to be the nature of something it's testing unknowns and I'll you know, some ICs, they're going to have very similar uh, characteristics as far as inputs and outputs. And this thing can only test so much. I mean, you think about it. It's a fairly limited circuit there. Um, but if you know what IC you're working with, like I say, you can tell it what series of IC, and it will then act much more accurately identify it. And that's the main thing is, it's just to tell if it's working. You can plop an IC in there, hit start. If it shows, if you put a... 7400 IC in there and it shows 7400 on the screen well obviously it's working because it could identify it all the input and output pins were doing what a 7400 series IC should be doing uh, like I say in unknown ICs you may actually end up with a couple it may say like 74 if it's you know 7400 series IC you may end up with like 7400 and then there's a comma and then there's two or three other groupings of numbers those are the other possibilities of what it could be dependent, because like I say, inputs and outputs, it may not be able to sense the specific, you know, characteristics of those those pins. So, but it get, it can narrow, narrow the ballpark down. But even still, it can it tells you it's working as as those ICs. So, like I say, let me get the screws back in it, and we'll uh, show show what this little thing does. Okay, so back with the it put back together got a few components out here just thought I'd try a couple random just basically grab some drawers and parts boxes and see what the hell this little guy says so I currently have a LM324 in it and you can see it's showing LM324 so you know, start with it in the off position got the IC in there now I don't know because like I say there's no instructions so <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of left to guess, but it seems like any time I stick an IC in this thing, the first time I hit enter, it turns on, it comes up like ER and a string of numbers. I guess it's an error code. If I hit it again, it tests again, and it and it gets it. So, I don't know. Like I say, you left up in the air. Let's see if it does it again. Yeah, ER555114. Eh, who knows? But if I hit it again, yeah, LM324. So... <laughs> Bad reflection is there. there. I don't know if you saw that or not. Let me turn it off and show you again. Yeah, ER555114. Who knows? But I hit enter again. Ta da! LM324. So it knows it's an LM324. Um, Zener diodes. I figured, well, what the heck? It says it tests Zener diodes. So and I use actually quite a few Zener diodes. I figured, well, I'll stick some in here that I use a lot. You know, 9.1, 5.1 volt ones. Um, now, I did notice if I tried to do the, the just auto test, yeah, it says not found. But in the kind of eh, iffy eBay description, it did say that, you know, you need to at least kind of give the give this poor little guy a hint what it's supposed to be looking for. So, 
uh, if we push the up down buttons here it scrolls through you know amplifier transistor zener diode other light 45 145s you know f40 cd40 74 ls hc's so if we go down to get back to zd for zener diode hit enter 9.16 volts and that is a 1N4739, which is a 9.11 watt Zener diode. So that looks to be working just fine on that one. We'll try a 1N4733 next, which is a 5.1 volt Zener diode. We'll stick the little guy in there, hit enter, and 5.20 volts. So again, I'd say that's working just fine. Grab some ICs here. Uh, what do I got here? These are oh, 555s. So just any 555s. If anybody's ever done blinky LED, you know, <laughs> projects and stuff like that, uh, pretty sure you had a, a 555 timer IC. Uh, I think this one picks up. Most of these I think pick up on automatic. You know, search auto. If I hit enter. There it is, NE555. So it, it identifies that as a working IC. Uh, what do we got here? These are 4051s. We'll grab a 4051, slap it in there. Now you may see me kind of jiggle that. I do that to kind of... And there went the camera. Popped right out of the mount. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's try that again without having the camera shoot across the room. So anyhow, I do that to kind of help self-align the IC so it's not in there too crooked. But the uh, 4051, got that one right. Let's try some 74 series. So here we got, uh, what do we got? 7426s. Get this one on the end, easier to grab. Okay, yeah, here's a good example. So it gives you some choices. Because this is, what the heck did I just say this was? A 7426. Okay, that's what's in there. 7426, and you can see it says 74, but you have a choice. 38, 03, or 26. So it is a 26. And like I said, I guess it's kind of limited. It can, it can get you in the ballpark. But we know that it is working as those three. So apparently those three ICs have very similar functions on all of the pins. Might just be a level difference. So, but it does identify it. And you know, if you got a project and you just want to, ah, oh, crap, is that IC any good? You can pop it in there. If you know what you're sticking, even if it's it had this sanded off, you could still stick this IC in there and you'd know it's one of those three. Like I say, there seem to be a few ICs that if it, it's not 100% sure, it'll give you a choice. Okay, actually, it looked like this one was pretty good. I just stuck in. You can see there, get it to focus, 74365s. And you can see, 74LS365. So, yeah, I'd say this little guy seems to be working just fine. I mean, for $31, like I say, I think it was 56 cents with free shipping. Um, hell, we can't make a plastic case in this country for that kind of money. It's it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I think that was money well spent. A little guy works. I'll have to, yeah, I know I've got some opto couplers somewhere. I have to dig, dig some out. I need to try some other things. Um, you know, just out of curiosity to see how well it works. But uh, from the ICs and Zener diodes, um, actually, when I first got it, I popped in a couple of transistors, tried a couple of them, they had tested okay. So, yeah, I mean, it seems to be, you know, for the money, can't beat it. Stick an IC in there, it tells you what it is, and if it tells you what it is, that means it's working. <laughs> so, there you go, there's just my review of the $31.56, uh, what they call IC tester. Yeah, there's no model number, no manufacturer's markings, there ain't nothing on this thing other than <laughs> IC tester and enter. And like I say, you're kind of left to wonder about what, you know, oh, yeah, kind of take that as off. Because when you hit that, it goes off. 
So up, down, the arrows, they kind of self-explanatory as well. You can see if I scroll over, and then I can move from auto. Actually, that's something I didn't show. You can scroll through if you know you have a 3.3 volt or a 5 volt component or automatic. And then you can scroll the little cursor over here. It's right underneath of the A in search now. That means you can scroll through this. And then when you're in the other, I guess this is other oddball stuff, like LM324, other stuff that it can identify, 741s, TLO82s, 84s, so lots of op amps. Oh, there was, matter of fact, we just checked that little guy, NE555. So all kinds of op amps. Um, let's see, there's other, yeah, there's other. Come to other, like ULN2803. Ah, top of my head, I can't even remember what the hell that is. Yeah, there's all kinds of other goodies in here. So, there you go. There's just a quick overview of a cheapy Chinese tool that I might actually find handy. Be good for, uh, especially when you get those little projects. Oh, man, people just love sanding numbers off of IC chips. And you know something, guys? <laughs> if, you, if you know enough about electronics to be trying to reverse engineer something in the first place, sanding the numbers off of the IC... Yeah, that's not going to stop anything. Um, you can just reverse engineer the entire circuit around it. And if you deal with electronics enough, you're going to know just looking at the circuit, it's an op amp, it was a timer IC, you know, it's a, a JK flip-flop. You know, it's it's kind of going to stick out like a, like a red herring, as they say. So, but yeah, little guys like this make it even more impossible to try and hide what you're doing because... Doesn't matter if you sand it off, you just stick the IC in here and <laughs> this little cheap ass thing, it'll tell you what you work, it'll tell you exactly what it is. And if all else fails, you can always pull it out and send it to, to Russia, pay them some money, they'll decap you know, they'll decap it, scan it with an electron microscope, and they can tell you not only what it is, but the programming <laughs> if it's a microprocessor. But uh, there you go, my review of the cheap eBay IC tester. Actually I mean, for the money, hey, thumbs up. It does what it says it does. it's supposed to do. You know, granted, no instructions, but it's not rocket science. So, yep, I'd have to say that actually works.